Today, boys and girls, we're going to be looking at what we're doing for our clay project this year. This year for fifth grade, we're going to be using a terracotta clay. That's this dark red clay that you can see here. You're going to be receiving about a half pound of it, so it looks your shape that you're going to get is going to look approximately like this, a half circle size. Uh, we have a variety of tools that we're going to be using for building with clay. Along with a container of water, each table will have a container of water. And it, this water is going to be used as our slip. Slip, remember, is like a glue. It's a liquefied type of clay that uses that's used to stick two different pieces of clay together. This year, um, you're going to be building a clay tile, so a slab tile with coil construction. You're going to have four options as far as what shapes you can be using. Um, one of the options you have is a rectangle, so you'll build right here on this piece of paper. You could choose to do a circle if you would prefer. There's a heart shape, and last but not least, we have a triangular shape. I'm going to be demonstrating with this triangular shape. Once you have chosen which, which um, design you'd like to work with, you definitely need to make certain you're claiming this piece of paper as yours. Also because your work, the clay work, will be done on the actual paper, we need to know whose work we're dealing with here. So make certain that you put your name on there. I'm just going to put Mrs. Dace. You would fill it out with your name, and let's go ahead and put your teacher's class there as well, too. Okay, so I'll set that aside for right now and explain some of these tools that you have here. Um, the basket at your table will have a variety of different type of plastic clay tools. They are double-ended, meaning that each end of the clay tool has a different purpose or a different function with it. There should be some tools that have a sharper end that can be used for carving and etching. There should be some tools that have some flat edges to them, either large, wide, flat areas or sharp, flat you know, edges that you can use to help smooth. And a tool like this is going to come in very, very handy. There will be access to a sharp tool. It's not a pokey sharp tool, but it is a thin tool made of metal. And we're going to be using this tool to put our names on the back of our work so we can identify it after it comes out of the kiln. Now you've chosen your shape. I'm going to be working on a triangle. I'm going to be making a slab coil built piece where I'm going to be creating a multitude of different rolled out coils with the clay and I'm going to be bound to fill in the space of this triangle or you're doing a circle, a square, or a heart depending on which one you chose. We want to build our overall thickness to be about half of an inch or anywhere a little bit you, you can go a little bit thinner than that but you don't want to go thicker than a half of an inch so a half of an inch if you're looking at a ruler a half of an inch is the halfway mark to that long tick mark that's there is the distance that um, we're looking to build at now your gauge that you have now I don't expect you guys to sit there working with rulers we don't want to be getting clay all over the rulers but if you look at your index finger um, you can see that the thickness of your index finger is a good gauge. It's something you have available to you. Obviously, it's attached to your, to your hand. Um, you can use this to help sort of gauge how thick is my clay. Is it the right thickness? Is it too thick? Is it not thick enough? If you build something that's too thick, it's going to take too long for it to dry. It might trap moisture and run into some problems um, in the kiln. If you make it too thin, it's going to dry too quickly, and that's going to cause it to fall apart and not be able to survive the kiln process. So what we're going to do to get started, you're working on a canvas mat, so every student should have a canvas mat in front of them. We want to work on the canvas mat so what we're building does not end up sticking to the table. Yes, we are working on a piece of paper, but sometimes when students are building or rolling coils, um, if, if you're rolling on, on the actual tabletop, sometimes that it gets the clay's really wet and it gets pretty sticky and it can get stuck to the table. So we should always be working on top of that canvas mat. Now what I want to do is twist off a piece of this clay. Trying to use these tools to saw off a piece is not going to work. This is pretty dense clay and I've seen a lot of students break these tools because they're trying to saw through something 
with a tool that's not meant for that purpose. So the easiest way to get off some of the clay is literally to just twist it. So you put your two hands together and you twist those in opposite directions to get that clay to separate. You don't need much of it. Remember, you're rolling coil by coil, and if you have too much clay, your coil's gonna get too big and floppy, and it's gonna end up not rolling out properly. So I'm literally just gonna put my two hands together, and I'm going to twist this just like that. I'm gonna set this larger chunk of clay to the side. We'll need it later. And I'm gonna take this, lar this smaller piece and I'm going to roll out a coil on the canvas mat. Now, when it's in a shape like this, trying to get started rolling is not an easy task. What you want to try to do is when you're rolling out the coils, roll with your palm, not your fingertips. If you're trying to roll with your fingertips, you're going to end up applying pressure that's not equal all across the coil. So you'll get some high spots and you'll get some low spots. So what you wanna do is first take it and bring it down so it's not so thick, so it's resembling sort of more like a lump. And then you're gonna go ahead and try to work right there on the canvas mat with your, with your hand rolling that. Now, when I'm rolling, I'm always just simply um, taking and only keeping that clay in my palm. Okay, so I'm rolling back and forth, back and forth on that coil as I'm working. I'm going to move this water out of the way so I don't bump into it. And I'm simply looking for when to uh, the correct thickness for the rolling of the coil. You're looking for it to be about as thick as your index finger. So it shouldn't be any thinner than your pinky finger though, okay? So even that little bit of clay that I took, already it's starting to get quite long, lengthy, um, but essentially I, it's too thick right now. If I'm looking at this, you see how that's ex excessively thicker than my actual finger right now? So I need to go ahead and get that rolled out. Now, rolling out the coil sometimes can be a little bit troublesome. You'll get some flat spots with it, but you just gotta keep working at it. So I'm simply taking my hand and I'm rolling it back and forth, back and forth to try to get this coil to be rolled out. So stop and check. You know, put those up there to gauge it. Again, it's still way too thick, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep rolling until it looks like it's about the thickness of my index finger. Remember, your index finger is this one that's right there. So I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna look. Ooh, it's close, it's getting close. It's just definitely not quite um, thin enough yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out just a touch more, and then that looks pretty good. So this is pretty comparable to my index finger now. So this is a pretty long coil. What I'm going to do is divide it up. If I try to make some type of shape or something inside of it here, I'm going to find that it's gonna be, it's really hard to work with when it's so long. So I'm gonna take a little bit, and what I wanna to try to do is fill the inside of this shape, in my case I'm working with a triangle, with any type of coiled shape. So you could do something where you simply take the clay and you roll it up on itself like a spiral, okay? You could do something where maybe you take your clay and you make sort of a back and forth sort of zigzag, you know, like a curved zigzag. That would be something that could work too. Um, you could take and you could make square, um, coil. That's essentially all you're doing is starting with that basic coil, like so, and then using gravity and the force of the tabletop, you can simply tap it and tap it on all four sides, and you end up getting sort of a square coil with it. So there's lots and lots of options available to you that you could use. Um, we went through some of our options you know, at, before we started the actual project here. So you guys have a little bit of experience with different types of you know, shapes and coil designs that you could make for your project. But before we start building, I wanted to just make a couple of mentions, notes about proper coil technique. So when you're rolling your coil out, remember, we're looking for it to fall between our index finger and our pinky finger. It shouldn't be thicker than this and thinner than that. We want it to be a pretty even consistency all the way through the length of the coil. You're probably most likely going to find that some of the ends get a little bit thinner. It's our natural tendency to sort of rotate our hand and it flattens the coil out just a little bit. But the main part that we're using for building should be 
even. It shouldn't be thin in some areas and thick in some areas. So this coil that's right here definitely does a pretty decent job with that. Now this coil, can you tell when you're looking at this, can you see that there are inconsistencies in thickness, that it's definitely way thicker it is here than it is over here, and looking from the opposite, you know, adjacent side, you can see that we've got some really thin areas and some really thick areas. This does not make for consistent coil building. We've got our paper and we're ready to start filling in this space that's right here. So simply all you want to do is you've got the coil rolled out. You want to go ahead and pinch some of this off. It doesn't have to be a long amount because remember our shape isn't terribly large, but we want to have some variety as we're filling in that space. So simply take it. I'm just going to do a regular sort of you know spiral coil and I'm going to put this right here in the space. I'm sort of trying to fill in the space first as I'm building. I want to make certain I'm building enough shapes to actually get everything to fill within that triangular space. So I would simply go through maybe this whole row. I want to have these sort of spiral coils. I want to get those to be pretty snug together and fill in the majority of the shape that I'm working with. Now, a triangular piece is going to end up with some of these edges that might be a little bit empty, but I'll show you soon what you can do to sort of remedy that. That's right there. Maybe the next row, I want to work with some S-shaped pieces, you know, something similar to an S-shape. Now it's going over the edges of the triangle a little bit, but that's definitely okay too. And then maybe I'll go back to some spiral shapes that are filling in there. So I've taken the time off camera and I've built these coils so that way you can see fill in your space first, okay? So now, the technique that we need to employ when we're using these coil pieces, right now they're all separate. If I were to let it dry like this, um, I would come back the next day or next couple of days and I would find that the whole thing is falling apart and I've got nothing but a bunch of separate dried out pieces of clay. Our goal is to try to merge these together by using proper slipping and scoring techniques by using some of the tools that we have and using some of the water that's acting as slip for us. A slip is like glue and the scoring creates these little tiny microscopic rough edges and fingers on the clay so when they overlap and we add the, the slip which is the water it fills in the space and it creates a nice tight bond with that. Okay, So I'm going to start here at the bottom. I'm going to set these ones aside knowing that I've got enough to work with and I want to go ahead and get these joined together. So I'm going to take my clay tool and I'm going to roughen up those edges. So that's called scoring and I'm going to put just a little tiny bit of water on there. You don't want too much water. If you have too much water, it makes it slippery and slimy, and then the clay doesn't really fit together very well. So the two edges that are going to join together, I need to make certain that both of those are slipped together and scored. So just a little bit there and a little bit here, and then I'm going to take those pieces and I'm going to gently wiggle them together without smashing them. Okay, so then those are set. Then the next row, I'm going to go through and I'm going to score, add a little bit of water, I'm going to score here on this side, a little bit of water, and wiggle those together. So they're becoming one tight unit um, that the scoring and the slipping helps bond those pieces together far better than it would if it was simply just stuck together because clay likes to dry. Um, and if it's not being held together by some type of surface uh, material, um, in this case the slip, it's going to sort of fall apart. So every surface that we're touching, I'm trying my best to remember to score and to slip. So all of the edges, these two are going to be stuck together. We're going to score and slip those. So you would just go through the whole process. And as you're putting them together, see how it helps to fill in those gaps? So I'm, I'm keeping the shape of my coils, but I want to go ahead and try to fill in some of those areas that are gapping just a little bit. So all those edges, I want to try to get those scored, which is the roughening up with the clay, and slipping those together. Okay, now that we have filled in our entire shape, in this case it's a triangle, whether you're working with a circle, a square, or a heart shape, it really depends on whatever shape you have. As long as you get the boundaries of that shape filled in, um, you're ready to move on to the next step. Now, another important fact with having the coil be a consistent thickness is that 
when you put those coils together, you don't have very many high and low spots that you have to deal with because our next step, when you have a coil that's pretty consistent, it makes it a lot easier. So you wanna find one of the tools that has a flat edge to it. And what we're going to be doing is taking care of um, smoothing all of these pieces together. So what we wanna see right now, we're looking at the what's going to become the back of the tile. So we wanna blend all of these shapes together in such a way that it looks like one solid triangular piece. We don't wanna smash it down. We wanna keep our thickness at the right amount, but we wanna make certain that we're doing the best job we can blending all of those pieces together. So I'm gonna take the flat edge and I'm going to pull it across my clay piece. So you can see already that where the clay has already been touching, that the process is definitely pretty easy to do. I'm pulling either towards myself or away from myself. So either towards myself or away from myself for this clay. And I want it to look like one solid piece. So one solid piece just like so. All of those little gaps have been filled in, um, but I also need to take care of the sides of the piece. If we look at the sides of the piece right now, we can see each individual coil that was used. And that's the, those are gonna become weak spots. As the clay dries, the air can get in there and it can still start popping these off from one another. So what we wanna do is make certain that we are keeping those edges nice and flat and nice and even. So I'm gonna use my flat tool and I'm gonna to try to recreate the shape of that triangle. And as I'm doing that, and I'm also dragging this through there, so I'm putting those pieces, mer I'm merging those pieces together. Now with a triangle, I have three sides that I need to do that with. So I'm gonna press that in there and that can help fill in those little gaps that you have here. That can help make that triangular uh, shape a little bit more pointy at the edges. And I'm just gonna simply smooth those together. I'm gonna do the same thing one more time. I'm gonna compress that together, point that back out like a triangle, and I'm gonna smooth that together, okay? So once you have all of those sides smoothed up, you know, they don't have to be totally perfect, but we should see that it looks like one nice solid piece now. Um, you are done with the major construction of this. And the one of the last important steps we need to do is to etch our name legibly on the back of this. If you would like to put the date on here, please do definitely go ahead and put the year, the date, whatever you would like. I usually tend to put the date on mine. So when I'm old and gray, I can look back and remember these things. So I'm ready now to go ahead and peel this off. And all of those coils that we made are not lost. They're actually still visible on the front of this. So I'm gonna carefully peel this right up. And then you can see the reveal, look at that. You can still see all of those cool coil designs and it's sort of bound and constrained within that triangular shape. If you have any you know, little extra pieces that are hanging around, now is the time to go ahead and clean those up as the clay is still pretty moist. And that's it. You've got your name on the back, you've got the coils visible, the sides are smooth together, and as this dries, um, it's definitely going to have a good chance at staying together really well. So when you receive your clay back and it's in this green, this bisqueware state, you have a couple of options. You could just take it home as is. You don't have to paint it if you do not wish to. This could be used as a coaster. It absorbs, absorbs moisture really well. Um, if you wanted to, it to be a little bit shiny, if you wanted to have a little bit of shine to it, you could add a clear glass coat on it. Um, it's something that you could just simply paint on with a paintbrush and let that dry. If you wanted to add some color to this, you could, absolutely. You would paint on with different varieties of types of paint, paint it on in whatever manner you would like, either one entire color for the whole thing, or each different coil could be a different color. Really, it's your choice because it's your work. Um, and you could you could walk out of here with a painted terracotta piece. But again, really, it's up to you. Again, this is your work. You can leave it plain. You can put a clear coat on it so it's shiny, or you could choose to paint it with the paints that we have available to us. Um, but regardless of what you do, 
I want you to enjoy the process, have the experience of creating a slab construction out of multiple coils. Um, I'm interested to see how inventive you guys can get with the coils and looking forward to see all the awesome creations that you're going to build.